Do you like going on tours like this? Is that kind of an interesting aspect of, of yeah. the promo and stuff? Yeah, I mean, when I would never be able, I'd probably never be in Russia. You need a work visa, you know, as an American. So it's the only way I could come here, really. And they're doing a big presentation yeah. for this. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's, uh... It's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. Now, I gotta ask, you know, like, when we first saw you, like, Transformers kind of, it felt like it, it was, it shot you in this kind of stratosphere that kind of... It must have been interesting. And so it's been how many years at this point? And so when you come to a set of the third round, how do you still, do, is it like a kid in the candy store still? Mm. Or do you feel like, uh, um, not that you have to muster, but you kind of, do you have to, how do you kind of play, or do you just get right into it? And, and Yeah, well, I mean, we, I got right in. Uh, I also, you know, I, my pride took a hit on the second movie because I didn't like it and I wasn't proud of it. And so Michael felt the same way. So when we both came to set here, it was like we'd never been so amped to come to set. There was no like lackadaisical anything. There seems to be a, a newfound kind of energy when I watched this film. It was like, oh wow, it's yeah. like it's like the first film again. And yeah. so, um, were there things about this round that that you yourself were really excited to be shooting? And, Definitely. And, like why? Well, you know, there's like this, just small stuff. Like there's this, like uh, Sam gets basically a PO officer on his, you know, on his wrist right. essentially, you know, like uh, and and. Anytime he doesn't do what the Decepticons want, it sort of it it uh, it hurts him because it's attached to his spine and his nerves and his his pain uh, his pain um, uh, nerve synapses in his brain. And so that's like a really for an actor that's incredible. So so wait a minute. So you're telling me not only do I get to create my co-star out of thin air in my mind and create his movements, but I also get to have this imaginary character also on my wrist that's connected to my nerve endings that punishes me anytime I do anything that doesn't like. So you go back through, through your dialogue, you go back through, you know, and you think about, you know, what what can I say here that would that would trigger this, you know, and what would the reaction be? Where would it hurt? You know, what how it's very it's like um like Buster Keaton's cameraman. I was just gonna say it does kind of bring a new set yeah. of, of, of muscle kind of yeah. uh, so was it interesting? Do you feel like you're ready for this kind of Pratt Folly type of uh, would you wanna move into something like that comedic physical comedy and I would, like I would happy to I'd be happy to do it, yeah. I don't know if that's where I'm trying to <laughs> beeline. I'm not like that's not like my <laughs> like I tried it, I'm gonna yeah. try it next. No. But um yeah, I, I enjoyed it. It was it was like a fun challenge. To be able to work on a film like this this time around, do you feel like because uh, um, it's in three D yeah. and kind of so and, and that third act is insane. I yeah. mean, and so uh, uh, what is being asked for you this time around? Was it more difficult, or do you feel like I don't know? How do you kind of prepare for something like this, uh, both it's, emotionally and physically? Then yeah, um, just starting with the physical physicality of it. I was coming off of Wall Street. Uh, where I was asked to be a certain weight um, and then came to Michael's office and he's like you gotta wait up kid uh, but I also have to run at the same pace so I like I, it was marathon training so I ran two marathons and then showed up on set you know which was really I never thought I'd be able to run a marathon probably wouldn't if I wasn't prepping but um, and never will again but uh, it helped me here and you know uh, also just the, the physicality that you know you can tell the difference when somebody sprays an actor with a bottle of water versus them actually sweating. You can see the heart rate on a face. You can see a heart rate on a face because your face throbs. Um, and so, you know, the physicality of that is const you're constantly, I mean, very, very physical. I try to uh, stay in it throughout the day. So you get in good shape doing that. Um, emotionally, you know, this is the, this is the, this is the most emotional uh, arc Sam has ever had. He's a, a purpose person who has no purpose in his life. He sort of validates himself on his involvement with these robots who no longer need him. And he feels unneeded and he's got really nothing going for him in his life. And um, it's the first time you have like real human loss in these movies. And it's the darkest version of this movie that we've ever conjured. Um, and um, Sam is sort of a broken man being nurtured by this very uh, nurturing, maternal almost woman who's picking him out of, you know, out of, out of, his, out of the slumps. Um, and, you know, like, like emotionally to lose Bumblebee is major for yeah. Sam, you know? To watch your, your best friend die in front of you is a major deal. Uh, on par emotionally with like, you know, some of the hardest stuff I've ever been asked to do. Because it's one, very difficult to get there. It's very difficult to get there when it's, there's nothing on the other side. It's very difficult. That was, it's probably the most difficult. It's me and Mike got into a big screaming match over it. It was very, very difficult, very difficult scene. 
uh, you know, when, when, when I'm basically selling my friends down the river. It's hard, you know, and, and, and there's also, Sam is being used as a pawn, you know. He's having to placate this side and lie to this side, but this side is all his friends, so he's basically, like, you know, backstabbing his best friends because he has to. Um, so, it, you know, there's a lot to deal with. There's a lot of meat to chew on for me. More than, fun. yeah, I mean, yeah. I have to ask last question. Uh, we, we asked some fans from the show yeah. to ask you a question, and so this comes from, sorry, um, uh, Adrian Sancio from the Philippines, and he goes, did it get tiring to keep shouting and repeating Optimus in all three films? And do you have variations of that at this point? <laughs> Optimus, yeah. Um, well, you, it's sort of, yeah, it's, it's, as a, it's as integral to Transformers now as like the no-no-nos or like the ticky stuff that Sam is. Um, and Optimus is part of that, you know? That, that um, yeah, it's sort of, um, what can I compare it to, really? I don't know, did Steven Seagal have like a catchphrase? Like, gotcha. Or some it's probably it. <laughs> yeah, it's like, it's like, it's like, it's like. So you're it's Steven like, Seagal. Totally, totally, nice. totally. Well, Steven. <laughs> <laughs> nice. really good.